Hello everybody, myself Neha Chashipura. I am lecturer in civil department at the College Murphy. Today I am representing one video lecture for irrigation engineering subject. So we will go through the fundamental means the definition of irrigation. What is the meaning of irrigation? Irrigation comes from Latin meaning a supply of water to land. Irrigation is the process where water is moved from one area where there is a lot of water supply such as rivers or reservoirs to another area which does not have much water. Why was irrigation invented? Irrigation was invented so people living not so near to a water source could drink, water their plants, cook, clean themselves and use boats for transportation. Figure shows the concept of irrigation. The water is stored in storage tank and delivered for supply to each and every direction where the water is required for different purposes like irrigation uh, like uh, sorry like agriculture or for inland navigation or etc this is the video exposure for the rainwater harvesting system which is used for irrigation purpose Rainfall is suffers. Rainwater collection from roof. Release the first shower. Collect water in a storage tank. Feed excess water to the recharge bed. Recharge ground water. So the rise in water level. Definition of Irrigation Engineering Irrigation Engineering deals with the analysis and design of irrigation systems which include dams, weir, barrage, canals, drains and other supporting systems etc. What is the necessity of irrigation? Inadequate rainfall, uneven distribution of rainfall, increasing the yield of crops, Growing a number of crops, growing a perennial crops, growing a superior crops, and insurance against drought. Now the next topic is benefit of irrigation. There are basically two types of benefits. First is direct benefits and second one is indirect benefit. Now let us see one by one of direct benefits and indirect benefits. So direct benefits of irrigation like increase in crop yield, protection from famine, domestic and industrial water supply, inland navigation, increase in groundwater storage, saving foreign exchange, canal plantation, communication facilities and overall development. Indirect benefits of irrigation Hydroelectric power, flood control, general prosperity, elimination of mixed cropping, optimum benefits, and afforestation. 
so these are the ill effects of irrigation pollution of underground water water logging of area creating unhealthy conditions due to damp climate mosquito nuisance high costing competition for surface water rights and depletion of underground aquifers so here is the remedy for ill effects of irrigation this ill effects can be effectively reduced and sometimes altogether eliminated by exercising economical and scientific use of water all the aspects of an irrigation project should be properly studied and implemented if necessary various commanded area development works should be simultaneously undertaken new topics is types of irrigation basically irrigation may be divided into two types surface irrigation and subsurface irrigation surface irrigation may also be divided in two parts flow irrigation and lip irrigation like subsurface irrigation is divided into natural sub irrigation and artificial sub irrigation flow irrigation is also divided in two types perennial irrigation and flood irrigation now let us discuss one by one types of irrigation so first of all surface irrigation system picture shows the surface irrigation system it depends on simple gravity flow of water over and across the land in order to wet it and to infiltrate into the soil most surface irrigation system derive their water supplies from canal systems sometimes the water is pumped directly from groundwater surface irrigation methods can be divided into furrow border strip basin or uncontrolled irrigation figure shows the surface irrigation system now next is subsurface irrigation system water is applied below the soil surface the effect of surface infiltration characteristics such as crusting saturated condition of ponding water and potential surface runoff are eliminated during irrigation with an appropriately sized and well maintained sdi system water application is highly uniform and efficient wetting occurs around the tube and water moves out in all direction these are the advantages of subsurface irrigation evaporation losses get reduced by weeds decrease the number of weeds period of irrigation is low at least approximate 2 to 3 hours the growth of plant is homogeneous decrease the infestation pests increasing the area of planting by saving the area of canals and decreasing the pollution in canals these are the methods or you can say techniques of irrigation free flooding irrigation system border flooding irrigation system check flooding irrigation system basin flooding irrigation system furrow irrigation system sprinkler irrigation method and last one is drip irrigation method so these are the methods of irrigation system which is very much important for your exam purpose so let us discuss one by one first one is free flooding irrigation system figure shows the free flooding irrigation system in this method ditches are excavated in the field and they may be either on the contour or up and down the 
slopes water from this ditches flows across the field in figure you can understand easily a free flooding irrigation system second method is border flooding in this method the land is divided into a number of strips separated by low leaves called borders the land areas confined in each strip is of the order of 10 to 20 meters in width and 100 to 400 meters in length which is shown in figure also third method is check flooding irrigation method it is similar to ordinary flooding method except that the water is controlled by surrounding the check area with low and flat levees levees are generally constructed along the contours having vertical interval of about 5 to 10 cm these levees are connected with cross levees at conventional places as shown in figure the confined plot area varies from 0.2 to 0.8 hectare in check flooding the check is filled with water at a fairly high rate and allowed to stand until the water infiltrates the next method is basin flooding irrigation This method is special type of check flooding and is adopted specially for orchid trees which shows in figure one or more trees are generally placed in the basin and the surface is flooded as in check method by ditch water now next method is pure irrigation system in flooding methods water covers the entire surface while in pure irrigation method only 1/5 to 1 half of the land surface is wetted by water in therefore result in less evaporation less pooling of soil and permits cultivation sooner after irrigation next and very important method for your exam this so this this question is asked in your old paper gtu gtu paper june 2012 sprinkler in irrigation method water is applied to the soil in the form of a spray through a network of pipes and pumps it is a kind of an artificial rain and therefore gives very good result it can be used for all types of soil and for widely different topographies and slopes this method is generally used in usa but nowadays in india this method is applied for particular some states Sprinkler irrigation system can be applied to any type of soil but it is best suited for sandy soil with high infiltration rates it is advisable that the average application rate from the sprinklers should be less than the basic infiltration rate of the soil in award to surface bonding and runoff now this is the video exposure of the sprinkler irrigation system as we can see there this is the suction filter which is collect water from storage tank and passes through the pipes and 
from trickle line and delivered is a spray form in on the field this is the top view of this irrigation system the circle shows the distribution of water These are the advantages of sprinkler irrigation system. First one is minimum seepage losses. Land leveling is not required. Fertilizers can be uniformly applied because mixed with irrigation itself. Prevent water logging or salinity. Less labor oriented. Up to 80% efficiency can be achieved. These are the limitations of sprinkler irrigation system. High winds may distort sprinkler method. Initial cost is high as well as system requires a high technical skills. The power requirement is high. Water must be clean and free from sand etc. The method suitable in arid regions because of high evaporation losses. A constant water supply is needed for commercial use of equipment. The last but not least the method is drip irrigation system. This is used especially where there is shortage of water and salt problem. The drip method of irrigation also called trickle irrigation. The method is one of the most recent developments in irrigation. It is one of the latest developed method of irrigation which is becoming increasing popular in areas with water scarcity and salt problem. It involves slow and frequent application of water to the plant root zone and enables the application of water and fertilizer at optimum rates to the root system. This method was first introduced in Israel. In India, it is being increasingly practiced in Gujarat, Maharashtra, Kerala and Karnataka. Picture shows the layout of different drip irrigation system. In drip irrigation, water is applied in the form of drops directly near the roots of the plants through special outlet device called a dripper. Here is the advantages of drip irrigation system. First one is no loss of water because all water drops at root zone. Second is no water logging and rise of water table at result salinity. Third one is problems caused by this irrigation type is almost nil. Fourth one is uniform distribution of water. Fifth is good water management. And last one is econo economical use of labor. This is the disadvantages of drip irrigation system. The initial cost of various components such as pumping unit, filters, pipelines, nozzles, etc. is very high. Second is due to change in the crops may result in frequent replacement of trickle lines. Third one is this matter is not suitable for closely planted crops such as wheat. These are the list of reference books according to your GTU syllabus. Thank you very much for listening me.